Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. We have a, a fun episode, I think, lined up today, one we don't talk about a whole lot. We're going to dive into leadership, different leadership styles, and really how to grow your company from yourself first and then the company, which is a very important conversation. If you are a longtime listener of this show, first of all, shout out to you. Thank you. We love you. Uh, but second of all, you know then that this show is about not only business, but mindset, body, health, all of those things. So what, what does it mean to be a true leader inside and out? We're going to dive in today with special guest, Leslie Galloway. Leslie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brandon. I'm so excited to be here. I am very excited to have you here. It's rare that we come across a true leadership expert who has a company built around coaching, developing, and helping leaders. So for you, who is uh, who do the typical leaders you look you work with look like are they you know fortune 100 companies are they small businesses give me give me the picture of that so there's definitely a range um i work with c-suite leaders i work with business owners and um i work with growing executives and middle management so i think there's a lot about a a leader's mindset and how growth oriented and coachable they are um so we've got a range yeah, that's interesting too, because you say their mindset and how coachable they are. What do you find breaks leaders the most? Is it is it just the pressure of it or do they elevate past what they're capable of? Do you run into that sort of thing? What breaks leaders the most? Um, I, I do think that mindset is such a critical part of leadership. And, and, and this goes back to what you just shared about if you're not growing yourself as a leader, then you you can't possibly grow your team or your organization well, right? And I think a lot of people don't think about that. We're, we're so externally focused in our culture that we, number one, won't take the time. I think there's, there's such a busy factor in leadership today that we won't take the time to do, to pause and do self-reflection because slow feels dangerous to leaders. Um, you know, we're, we're just, we take the bait of the fast pace, um, you know, busy equals productive kind of culture. And so when you ask what breaks leaders to me is we're asking leaders to be super strategic. And yet so many leaders that I work with are still struggling with the execution role and, and, and what, causes them or keeps them from zooming out to be strategic about themselves, about their teams and about their companies. Mm. Now, this is this fascinates me because I, I find when people become leaders, it's usually from within the organization. So they're being promoted up and I want to get into leadership styles and actually developing yourself from the inside out. We, we will get there in this conversation. But this I want to pick apart because when you have, let's say, a middle manager uh, or, or any level of employee that's promoted to becoming a leader, the typically the employee mindset is to do the busy work or, or to sure. look busy to keep their job, essentially. Yeah. And not yeah. all organizations, but but most, the vast majority of them. So when someone goes from that mindset and that, I guess I'll say work ethic or work mentality into becoming a leader, it's it's actually a whole different way of leading yourself and and managing your day and your outcome. So how do you help people make that switch and go from being busy to being effective? Gosh, it, it, it feels like such a risk for people because to your point, um, we teach people how to work hard. We teach people the execution, as you said, we teach them how to work with people, but we don't teach them strategy. And we might say, and when I say strategy, I even um, one of the words that's synonymous with that is patience. I mean, strategy takes time. It takes thought. It takes, you know, it, it requires the pause button. And <clears throat> like I said, I think that it feels really risky to leaders because you hear them say, well, I don't have time to be strategic. 
right? Like I don't get paid to be strategic. I get paid to get work done and to get along with the people that I'm working with. And yet you and I both know it's impossible if you are constantly in motion to number one, notice what's going on. Maybe, you know, what's working for me? What's not working for me? What's working for this team? Like those are all questions. They're wonder questions, right? Like they, they require us to stop and evaluate. And so I think the way that I help leaders is number one, we have to challenge that perspective. It is not true, right? So yes, we need pace in our culture because for so many of us, I mean, you know, business is changing at this rapid clip um, and we have to keep up. And yet there's this tension that I think we have to keep between um you know, carving out time and, you know, we call it really, it's like having a strategy meeting. I mean, it's like having a staff meeting with Brandon, right? If you don't have a staff meeting that's on your calendar that you guard, then you'll just roll into, we call it being super zoomed in for clients. When you're zoomed in, you can't see the forest for the trees. Um, and that's a huge pitfall long-term for leaders. If they, if they can't, if, you know, it keeps us from vision casting. And here's the thing for a leader, that's a leader's job. Nobody else's job is to vision cast, right? I mean, if, 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 if you have a team of people and yet you, you, you delegate vision casting, can you even imagine doing that for your company? That would be insane. <laughs> it would be insane. And yet, people do that. <laughs> well, and, and, and perhaps, but then it's, if I'm lost as a leader, then my people are definitely going to be lost, right? Um, so this takes a lot of discipline because it's countercultural. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be like showing up to work every day and be like, what, as the leader, what do you guys want to do today? Where, <laughs> where, where, where do you want to take this company? Yeah. That would, uh, that would, that would not be well. super effective. No, no, it wouldn't. You'd have probably a lot of uh, engaged employees for about a week and then they'd be like, this sucks. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's right. Wrong. That's right. It, it, and it's funny. It's almost like thinking about kids showing up and the parents being like, hey, what should we do today? You know, for th that might feel good for maybe about an hour and then you would feel incredibly unsafe and you would want to go find someone else that's going to help set vision until maybe you get to a point in your career where you want to begin to do that yourself. Yeah. So this, I guess this kind of leads into the the conversation of, of actually developing yourself from within. So when you come into an organization, whether it's to work with the, the CEO, the leader, or a leadership team, middle management, whatever it is, where do you start with people to help them up their leadership game and get the company moving in the right direction? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I think that that we, we always look at, okay, what's the biggest tension point? Um, I might see what the there's always a theme right with leaders and teams and yet a, a client has to be able to buy into that first right like what what are they struggling with most but what oftentimes we come around to is lack of self-awareness right and we we talk about this all the time and yet this is one of the most powerful things that is affecting leaders, a leader's influence. And, and that's what leadership in essence is influence, right? It, it's, it's your ability to influence me as a team member, as a, you know, a client, as a, um, but, but in order to have influence, you, you have to, you have to understand how do you influence other people? So, you know, we typically look at, it's, you know, a, a really a grid of like four different leadership styles if we're being really simplistic. And there are so many tools out there that assess this, right? And, and you know, we talk about this a lot because people will say, well, do you use the DISC? Do you use LIFO? Do you use MBTI? I don't believe there's a tool or the tool, but it's, it is, you know, having some kind of framework that gives you a language for when I show up, how do I like to influence people? And, and here's the question, Brandon, is how does that work for me, right? Like, where is that working really well for me? And where am I losing people, 
where are my blind spots? Because if I don't know my blind spots, then likely I might come and engage two people on my team, but there's eight other people that speak a totally different language than I do. And if I don't know what that is, then I'm losing them. And as a leader, that's a really scary thought because engagement is what people want. If my people aren't engaged, then we're, we're losing results, right? We don't have commitment, accountability, and results. Yeah. I think the word influence though gets a negative connotation. So okay, say more. Um, I'm curious to hear your feedback on this. Um, you know, when, when we think of influence, we typically think of a sales conversation, whatever that is, whether it's to a group of people, to one-on-one, -on -one, or it's uh, there's some really terrible influence like cult leaders and stuff like that. So okay. not that we're not influencing our employees and our team members and our companies and our clients because we are, but I'm curious to hear your feedback on the difference between influence and inspiration as mm -hmm. a leader. And I'll just unpack it real quick. And then I want to hear your feedback. Influence, I've said everything I need to say about that. Inspiration seems more like I'm helping people do what's in line with what they need to do in order for them and the company to benefit. Whereas influence seems I really just want them to do what I want them to do. Mm -hmm. Unpack that for me. No, that's, that's, that's interesting. And it also just brings up the, you know, this, this word in our culture influencer, which has such a, which also has positive and negative connotations, right? So, so you're right that that word has become a bit more charged than I think if we were to break down and really look at what the word means, it's, you know, my, my ability to, um, to, you know, bring you along one way or the other, right, to engage you in a process. So I think inspiration is a really interesting word. I love it because it's part of my style. I love, I love to be inspired. That is a tool that comes naturally to me to use with other people. Um, and I think part of what you're speaking to is there's a psychology around knowing how to draw people in to what you are wanting to create and wanting them to do, right? And, and there, there is a bit of what do I need my team to do, right? Because as a leader, I, I've got to have that. But I think your point is, it isn't just my agenda, right? Like as a leader, I have to be, I have to be balancing hey, here's, here's a vision, but what does my team see, right? Because I, I'm one person, yes, I am heading up this group. And the other piece of this is I've hired an amazing team that are going to bridge and supplement my blind spots, right? And, and, and I want to depend on them. And if I don't get them to weigh in, then they're not going to buy in. So it's, it's a balance between the two, right? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's You're absolutely right. And really, if we go one step back to the vision, like you said, the company's vision, the leader's vision, if we hire the right people who are in line with the vision and the mission of the company and we build them up as human beings and not just have them as our like uh, widget-making task force. Yeah, that never works. I yeah. think we can use either word, influence or... Um, inspiration because then they are in line with the company. The The negative side of influence is when you want someone to act against their self-interest or only in line with your interests. Sure. That's where you get the negative side of influence. So uh, it's a great point. And, and you know, what's interesting. So I had this conversation with my 11 year old yesterday and we were talking about, she says to me, you know, mom, I shared something with a friend and instead of in wanting to get her validation she completely disagreed with me. And we talked about this idea of you want friends who disagree with you, right? You want members that say, hey, hold on, I actually don't see that side of it. And you want a safety, there's gotta be safety before we're willing to do that, right? And, and I think that that's this trust and vulnerability, which is a, a totally different conversation. But I do think that as a leader, if you aren't developing self-awareness, trust, relationship, then we don't have any of this 
it's not safe to say I don't agree or, you know, we, we don't really have that dialogue that we're wanting that's going to create the kind of results we want to create. Yeah, I agree with you. That's that your culture and your team has to be found on that or or else you have nothing. You, you just have service yeah. level everything. Um, yeah. inter very interesting point. I like that. So I'm curious then. So we we have that established. Now we have to work with the individual leader, whatever part of the company they're with. I, I think they need to show up authentically and and be themselves and lead as themselves or else there's going to be this dissonance between who how they're showing up and what they're saying and what they truly believe so how do you go about leveraging the individual leader to perform at their best with their style oh man this goes back to the safety piece i think um i think that leaders number one have to believe they're in an environment where they can that they can show up as authentically as possible. I mean, we're, we're in businesses and I know that that they're this is not this easy button. And yet I think leaders of organizations and teams have to be willing to create the space like we just said. Um, and so. We throw that word authenticity around so often, and yet it is really powerful because people can tell they can tell if you, they can feel the lack of alignment between what you're saying and who you are. And so when people feel that and, and the psychology around this, we know this in sales and I can immediately feel if I don't, if, you, if, if you're not saying what you're actually, what your beliefs are, right? Like I can feel the difference and I'm immediately going to pull away. I might not even know that's happening. Um, so how do you do that? I think that it is definitely a process. Some people are closer to it earlier than others, right? Like some people you gotta, it's, it's, it's peeling an onion and it takes a while. Um, but I think that when leaders can see the direct payoff and pitfall to not doing this work, it becomes much more compelling. We've got we've got to stop looking at this as being so soft and superfluous. Hmm. First of all, coming on my show and using words like superfluous with me, I'm, <laughs> I'm insulted. Um, <laughs> I joke, of course, but no, that's there's so much to unpack here, Leslie. I don't know about you. This episode. Uh, made me think way too hard and really made me stretch my mind to what leadership is. And we only scratched the surface. I, I feel like we could go for like eight hours on leadership. I know you could probably go for eight days on leadership, yeah. um, but I really appreciate you coming. So I have your website on the screen, wherever you're listening or watching. It's also in the show notes, innerleapgroup.com. That's Leslie's website. Um, who should go there and and reach out? Like what, what does somebody get after they work with you? Yeah. So, um, leaders of companies, teams, I would say people who are know that they are looking for their next big thing. And this is the reason Interleap, this is the, the, the meaning behind the name of this is that enter is the relationship between a coach and a client, right? And then the leap, it's the enter, it's that relationship that creates the leap. And that's what clients get from um, the work with us is is transformation. They get from, okay, where am I now? And what am I trying to create in my world? Whether it's a, you know, a next role, um, growth is their team for their team or their company. Um, they get that leap from the coaching. That's awesome. And I'll say this, you know, an organization can only grow to the limits of its leaders. So make sure you are investing in your team, but not only your team, yourself as a leader, make sure you have the tools to That's elevate great. your leadership to the next level. Leslie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Brandon, thanks for having me. Have a great day. Of course. And thank for those you. listening, watching, again, wherever you are, thank you, but also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single minute of this ridiculous and superfluous show. <laughs> I don't even fully know the definition of superfluous. I'm going to go look it up, but maybe I'll put it in the description down below. I will see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks.